Well, folks, I hope you're ready to have a good time tonight because you're gonna, with our guest meter maids, swell and sentence, they bring it. Plus, Strange Famous Fest in Denver, Colorado, June 17th. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Stop what you're doing and, and listen. D-O-D-45. This is the DOD 45 show, drawing over discussions 45 minutes with a special guest. Welcome. I'm your host and resident artist, Ty of Art by Ty, and with my co-host, Adrian Taiwali'i, we're having conversations with people who I admire and am inspired by. On this episode, I'll set a 45-minute timer, put my pen to the paper, and we'll learn about our guest through an interview-style discussion. So stay right here with us to experience some laughs and maybe even learn a thing or two. Greetings, Earthlings. Hello, everybody out there. His name is Crew. BMX is his world. Rad is his way of life. Take that to the bank and cash it. Ho, 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 everybody. Open up your dough. Strange what, Famous what Fest even, is what, on in June 17th. What even was that? What were you trying to get to with that? Oh, uh, well, it will, that will be uh, revealed a little bit later on. It's from the, it's from the, the well, I'll reveal that a little bit later on. Um, it's only for this episode. I won't start every episode saying his name is Crew. BMX is his world. Rad is the way of life. Um, Strange Famous Fest on June 17th. Make sure you register for your tickets. That's um, just next, that's this weekend. So, um, yeah. My guess is uh, people already have them. I hope so. There, you know how there's some people that are like last minuteers. Um, one of our, uh, one of um, the DoD forty five uh, audience members on the last episode, he he commented that he he says he likes our back and forth, Chad Green. Mm. Well, thanks, Chad. Thanks, Chad Green. I have a really good friend that I grew up with named Chad Green. Um, he When he first came to uh, elementary school, he came from a different school when we were in elementary, and it was me and this other kid named Eric. We were best friends. We were like the, we were like running that school. <laughs> Not really, but we thought so in our minds. But this kid, Chad Green, showed up. Not the Chad Green that commented, who's a DOD 45 uh, um, appreciator. But anyway... He showed up to school from a new school. Uh, I guess we were probably in like fourth grade, but he had a rat tail. (laughs) Yeah, we did not like him. I can't picture him with a rat tail. Oh yeah, he was a little. He was a little uh, hood hoodlum. He's so quiet and sweet. I I can't imagine. Yeah, it was a weird fit. Yeah, and me and Eric Reyes would bring up. uh, Would listen to like the Violent Femmes on on the radio out out at recess because I used to carry around a ghetto blaster. Um, of course you did. Yeah, and Chad Green liked um, he liked like uh, Iron Maiden, and I think he did. But he's like, "What's this fight?" I don't know. It was I wasn't even going this into that route, but I don't know. It was in it was interesting. So anytime I see Chad Green yeah. comment, I'm always like, "Oh, Chad!" Oh, I I Chad. totally thought it was Chad the first couple. So did I episodes <laughs> that I saw um, his name commenting. Yeah. Um, but then it was clear it wasn't our Chad. Yeah. Well, now it's our Chad. Mm. <laughs> Remember the term Chad. hanging Chads? Oh, my God. Florida and their effing hanging Chad. <laughs> right? Wasn't it Florida? Yes. Yeah. That was what, um, why, Florida. what's his name lost? But not Bush. Well, Bush won. Who was it? Was it, it Gore? Yeah, Al Gore. Oh, yeah. Man, can you imagine? Who knows? Who, Who knows? knows? Who knows? Um, <laughs> I got this new system. I'm liking it. Let's see. Nobody, okay. nobody, nobody can, can see, see it. it. So it doesn't matter. Hey, you don't want to know this real quick story. I've got about three minutes to tell this story because yeah, there was this time we used to all hang out at my parents' house when we were younger mm-hmm. are you talking about me and you no or? me uh, well yeah of course you too and but like i was i just hung out at my parents house they were open they were open mind like that's where we would go hang out and 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 i'd have parties all the time and 
Uh, but one time they were out of town. They were only, you know, cool with us, like, having, like, drinking and stuff over there. I'm thinking about high school. No, just, a, yeah, high school. Maybe even junior high because we didn't have driver's licenses. Shit, this was junior high, I so think. So I'm sure they didn't know you were drinking. They well, were probably drinking. Yeah, but this and story doesn't contain probably... drinking. This is even worse. Wow. So we had this pool table uh, in this area that, well, I'm trying to build a picture and I don't even need to do all that. One time I was having a party and we used to do this thing, um, plug your ears, kids, my kids. <laughs> they don't watch our show. Anyway, we were, we um, used to take um, LSD when we were, you know, around that age, junior high. God, what a weird, I got so many stories about that. I'm all over the place. Let me slow down. So one time we were all frying at the house and we were playing pool and we had this friend named Jeremy Harris who's since passed away, RIP Jeremy. Um, but we were like just kind of hanging around the pool table and he was playing around with a pool ball and like he had it in his mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my friend Eric, who I spoke of earlier, he like took the pool stick and I don't know what he was thinking. He was kind of just playing around, but he like hit the ball and the ball was like in, the, in Jeremy's mouth, but it, the whole pool ball like sunk behind his teeth. <laughs> it like dropped in. He was kind of a heavier kid and he was like laying flat on his back. And he, <laughs> and he was like, oh, 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 oh. and we were all freaking out because we were all so frying. And uh, I was thinking like, I, I, we gotta, I, we're going to have to call the ambulance because Eric would grab the ball and he was trying to pull the pool ball out of his mouth. And every time he'd pull it, like his head was coming up. It just would not come out of the mouth. It was terrifying. And we weren't, it wasn't hallucinations. It was really happening. And then somehow after like 10 minutes of just panic, his, I think his jaw relaxed or something. And then it like came out, but oh man, I don't know. So I, Something happened this weekend that reminded me of that story. And I was like, oh, I totally forgot about that story. I want to tell that story. Yeah. Something did because you told the kids that the other day. Yeah. Or you told us that the other day. That's... Yeah. Something something happened. I can't remember yeah, what it was. It would have been better. Crazy. If I, knew exactly I don't know why you guys would have been playing pool when you're on acid. That just doesn't sound like a good idea in general. Well, that was where we used to hang out that in that pool room when my parents were out of town. And if we were like, we were all hanging out up there. And... But I guess... We loved playing People pool. People aren't making great decisions when no, they're on acid anyway. No. I have another story that I'm going to share at some point about the very first time I took LSD. I was in, mm. I was, it was the summer of sixth grade going into seventh grade. That yeah. summer was my very first time. What a crazy, I can't even imagine. <laughs> That's so young. That's like. He didn't feel young at the time, probably. No. What, how old is that when you're going into junior, into seventh like grade 12 13 holy cow well oh boy yeah that's yeah that's uh that's crazy um hey let me do a, um some a couple of shares and then i'm going to get into our um uh, the guest intro and then we'll we'll get our guests in here um so i have my movie share is a movie called the hummingbird project it, it's got uh, jesse eisenberg Wait, are you sharing a movie every day now i might yeah i like movies mm, i love okay. movies i know a lot about them they'll be short all right. But people can, you know, I made movies, so why not? I always wanted to do, I always wanted to have something where I could share a movie. Okay. So, yeah, Jesse Eisenberg and Salma Hayek are in it. And uh, it's, a, it's a cool movie. Jesse's like a, he's a, a high-frequency trader, and he goes up against his old boss, who was played by Salma Hayek. Uh, and they're coming up with some tech shit to make millions of, millions of dollars in a fiber optic mm -hmm. cable deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, faster fiber optics by like one millisecond. That's what they're trying to do. Uh, could potentially make them like $500 million a year. That's what the movie's based on. Um, uh, it's kind of like what my brother is up to right now. Like coming up with ways to make money. beat the market and all that shit. Yeah. Anyway, I think that the movie is ba potentially based on a true story or maybe not. But yeah, don't quote me on that. But um. It's not like super memorable, but it's a pretty damn good movie. And Eric from True Blood is in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. He plays like a. Have you? Do you remember it? Did you watch it with me? I no. You usually watch movies alone. He kind of plays like this loser genius guy. Mm -hmm. He's got like a bald comb over. He looks so weird from Eric in True Blood. Is, is, that's his character's name, right? Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. the actor's name is Alexander Skarsgård. Uh, 
Anyway, he stands out in that movie. It's a good movie. Check it out. The Hummingbird Project. And then my song share um, is Nina Simone's Funkier Than a Mosquito's Tweeter. Oh. That's Jazim's, uh, but it's not just that song. It's Jazim's all-style remix featuring Azim and Jazzy Nice. Same old game, same old thing. Always rapping about the same old thing. funky and i just can't get enough of it uh there's a badass drum solo in it that um i offered our son soul a hundred dollars if he were to figure it out just to mm. give him some incentive to figure it out play it play that uh i know it and every time you play this song you hurry and turn up the drum solo i know because i want him. it's so <laughs> That's great not how people are inspired in our kids soul especially he's not inspired by That's money true. That's true. Anyway, yeah, that's a really, it's it's really awesome. Uh, I'll sh- I wrote this quote down. Um, it's something that I wrote actually. <laughs> I found it in my phone. See if you can guess where it's from. This is what I wrote: From the comforts of fine white linens in a plush resort palace, nestled on the green acres of a PGA golf course, to the torment of dusty scented sleeping bags in our drab and damaged vehicle parked atop the gray acres of a concrete city parking lot. The ups and downs of living on the road. Oh, maybe I was saying you go from this two, like the like a plush hotel to sleeping in the van. <laughs> that's what it must have been. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, that's my. Uh, do you have a song share? Um, sure. Uh, everybody is a song. Okay. By Wax Taylor and uh, Dell is on it and Mr. Liff. Oh, it's not just me, it's everybody. No, you better cut that. That's way wrong. <laughs> I'm leaving it in. <laughs> no, but... I don't know. It's cute. I like that. It's not cute. It's a good song. Wipe the ready, renegade over any drop and hit greedy gremlins like a roll of rusty pennies. Enemies of any scatter and spread just like buckshot, piercing through club spot, windows and ducks drop, fear of heights, mirrors, lights, disco ball, flip and fall, I'm licking off, miss the mop and glow, dot the flow, exquisite beats come with it, that's out you know, yeah. Miss the lift, miss the elevation, high exalted, rises to the top, he's in the cockpit, mosh pit, hop in, I'm getting my licks. Mission fixated and fixed in six minutes. That's the business. All right, awesome. Great share. Okay, well, let's get into this guest intro. Uh, so, our guests today, tonight, are um, the Meter Maids. They're Brooklyn based MCs, Swell and Sentence. And they, I guess they sort of started back in 2007. I read somewhere, uh, uh, either they called it the, but they call it hip hop for hipsters. I think that's kind of a stupid classification, but what do I know? <laughs> uh, but hey, listen to this tagline. This is a tagline in their bio on strangefamousrecords.com. Uh, it's like at the end of the bio. It says, the official, the official tally runs as follows. This is about the meter mates. Two full-length records, four mixtapes, well over 100,000 downloads, press coverage in international publications, three natural national tours, one East Coast tour with rap legends, the LOX, two cliched letdowns from major labels, one showcase for Damon Dash, two marriages, two kids, and hundreds of electrifying live shows with their strange famous crewmates thrown in along the way for good measure. Good measure. I like that. Yeah. Two marriages, two kids, and hundreds of... Yeah, I like that. Uh, but I, uh, I really dig their vibe. The music is spot on. Uh, the lyrics are enjoyable, and they package it all together very smoothly. Um, I like how playful they are. And tonight I'm going to draw them a rad-themed piece, the movie Rad, with a crow as crew. Rad is that terrific movie from the 1986. From 1986. Do you remember it? The BMX I don't, movie. I don't know what the hell you just said. Oh, the, I don't know. No, I you. I didn't know. Sorry, no, I just didn't know what you just said. 
I'm gonna draw them this. This is Crow as the guy's character's name is Crew in the movie Rad. Okay. Do you remember the movie Rad, no. the 1986 mo- BMX movie? No. Oh, it's kind. It was kind of like a gleaming the cube or, or skateboard movie, but for BMXers. Okay. Um, I might sla- slap some MacGruber flavor in here somehow, but we'll see. Um, that song of theirs, "Kill the Crow," is good. It is. Well, I, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. Uh, yeah, no, it's a really great song. I, I was gonna do it in. Um, what's the term when you go on a kind of like an order? Buck and say. Yeah. Um, sentence. He's also a virtual artist. I think he is. Uh, not a virtual. A visual artist. And he actually produced the first song that Sage Francis ever did with Slug. And that song's called Days Grow, Day Grows Old. And that's, that's on Sage's Sick of Waiting Tables album. Actually read when I crash and burn, it keeps a record of every last word. I said it goes one for the finger fuck, two for the peace sign, three strikes you're out. Casey's at bat with unloaded guns in his mouth. Day grows old. Save your soul as the day grows old. We pave this road when we take control. We will save your soul. And it burns just like that famous ring of fire. Sing to inspire. Wait, we can sk- Sage and Slug have songs together? Yes. Yeah. Oh. yeah, that that one's a really early one. But yeah, Sage messed with me, said that that was the first song he ever did with Slug, and it's produced by Sentence. Uh, I think when they're on the call with us here, Sentence is in Montreal, and Swell is in Brooklyn currently, right now. Um, I'll ask about that. Their song, Girls and Music, uh, the video was listed as Meter Maids vs. Animal Collective, and they're in, on a split screen riding bikes. And the camera's like shooting up for, from them. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Bring them in, pack out the place. Everything, everyone say. Go away, run away straight. We all get in here today. Hands up and pledge in allegiance. Pass through the tracks with your secret. Packing the ball of the pieces. Pass it back out through the speakers. Don't gotta worry about logic. Not what you're holding in your pocket. Or if you're playing the folding. If you fly coach, you fly cock. It's love and it's hate and it's pleasure. It's dumb and it's taken forever. It's numbness, it's pain and it's pressure. Fuck, it's the greatest thing ever. Finger pistol, gun of the moon, stick them up like nothing to lose, move back side it to the one with the crew, till the sun comes up and the knuckles are bruised, on time when the break beat hits, keep it cool uh, their nightlife album from 2008 has party kind of vibes, it's got like these really driving beats, it's very hip hoppy sounding, that was from 2008, their album Rooftop Shake uh, from 2011 they did with DJ Rob Swift, and Ninth Wonder, and there's a, the, that's uh, got the track on there called Kill the Crow, which features, like I said, Sage Framus and Buck 65. You can't beat the system, use it just to live a little. Kingdom come, kingdom go. Wrap the cradle with a riddle that kills the crow. The go. Sometimes we don't like the animals that have the same qualities as us. We don't like crows, because crows are opportunistic. Not for nothing, but ain't no heroes on the street after three in the morning. At four o'clock is crushing. I've seen a man lose a fight to a street light. I've seen another man shot for bluffing. Call it tough loving. To get here is easy, easy. Pack a warm jacket and a good book of matches. The Lord holds a place for the crooks and addicts. <laughs> that song is awesome. Kill the Crow. Um, so their latest album called We Brought Knives. It's uh, from way back in 2014, and it was produced by M. Stein. Does that name sound familiar to you? Mm, Frank M. Stein? (laughs) (laughs) He is the son of R.L. Stein, the Goosebumps author. Author. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, There are three tracks on this album, uh, We Brought Knives that really stick out for me. Uh, one of them is advice I know you won't follow. And that's chock full of great lines. One of the lines in that song is, don't play video games in public. Lunch. There's always somebody more tired than you on the train. Don't sample anything but vinyl. Trust me, yo. It's not the same. Being addicted to girls won't help to get you laid. Well, maybe a little bit, but with shades of gray. Don't shave your face in a hurry. Don't be so afraid to change. Tell the people that you love that you love them. Make music like nobody will hear it. If you're ever at a wedding and the dance floor is empty, it's hard, motherfucker. Be fearless. Don't play video games in public. Never take shots at people in private. And that was funny to me because remember when we were just recently in Boulder? 
Yeah. And that homeless guy was down there underneath the bridge playing. He was full on like playing video, video games, games yeah. with a paddle, like with a paddle. He wasn't homeless. Oh, wasn't no, he? No, no, he oh, was just okay. some dude. <laughs> he, I don't know. I thought he was because he was right in the area where all the homeless people were. I think he like, was just getting shade so oh, he could see okay. a screen. <laughs> yeah, I did. I really thought I was like, oh, check. Because I, I saw him up the day before. He was up there playing, uh, kind of by where we parked the van. He was playing video games. Video games. Yeah. Oh. Well, he didn't obviously didn't take the advice of meter maids, but no. <laughs> um, also the song "I Am" it, uh, that one's a keeper. School's out for summer. School's out forever. Shout and scream, kill the king and bail it all his servants. Make time stop and leave you stranded in the year of the snake. Cause I done been face to face with the serpent. Thirteen's my lucky number. You got bad luck. Meter maids, Brooklyn, live and uncut. It's all over now, baby blue. It's been some rocky ground. Sure shot, dead to the world, baby. Now, if you got the money, honey, we got your disease. Number nine should have been number one to me. You can't hurt me. I'm banned in DC 'cause the piano's been drinking, not me. Uh, I love the beat, the raps, the video, the whole damn deal. And finally, uh, profiteer. And that track's got the perfect macabre, moody kind of vibe that, uh, you know, that I, I love. A hundred dollars plus tax to make them feel me, yo, typewriter, fine, right arm, written clearly so you can't misread. She told me it'd be healing slow, I told her that I lost somebody near me. You don't hear me though. Your room is still just like you left it. Bookmark in the book, 60 pages till the ending. I read the last page once, I was sitting on your bed. The woman leaves her husband for his friends. In the fifth grade, they packed us up and took us to the zoo. I don't remember much. Cold wind, sky was blue. Winter's over, so the outside world gets reacquainted. Playing probably just happy that I wasn't at the school. So we talk shit to the lions. Anyway, we brought knives. Uh, it's a super solid album, and probably my favorite to date. The growth from their um, nightlife album to We Brought Knives is really apparent when you hear it, and I can't wait to hear their newest project which is currently being produced by our man Alexander Brown and Buddy Peace on the Cuts. So, Brown, I was just texting with during the last... I was texting him some Young Guns quotes. <laughs> and then uh, he told me that it's been a pretty magical experience making this album with uh, yeah. Meter Maids. Yeah, I don't... So, it's, 2014 is the last time the album was out. So, I'm oh. sure they're ready to, like, blow right out of the cannon. So, we'll see. Okay. Yeah, there you go. That's my build up to them. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back with the homies from Meter Maids, Sentence and Swell. And uh, let's see what uh, kind of trouble we can get into with them. Okay. We'll be right back after these messages. D-O-D-45. Hop sauce. We're real thrilled to have partnered with Hob Sauce for three simple reasons. Their hot sauce is delicious, the owner and creator David is a solid dude, and they collaborate with dope artists for their labels, including myself. Boom! Amplify your favorite foods with their award-winning flavors. Head over to hobsauces.com to get yourself some absolutely delicious artisan hot sauce. Hit it, Bobby. Hab sauce, hab sauce. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Put it on your food. Hop sauce. This is flyover country. No one's expecting much from us. In fact, no one's expecting anything at all. The coast probably think we're at Walmart right now. We're doing our fire, by the way. <laughs> Instead, here we are making plans. Big plans. Because in a city where people do so much with so little, what could happen if we gave them more? More beauty, connections, perspectives. This is your chance to be a part of something bigger than itself. Something that's made of brick, concrete, and steel. But also for blood, sweat, and soul. Something that can only be possible in St. Louis. Because when no one's expecting much from you, you can do anything. Our city deserves something epic. Long live laborious. Check out our new partners, Brim of the World, a.k.a. Seek, Conquer, and Destroy, a.k.a. Aliens Built Earth. Show them some love and treat yourself right to a new wardrobe or some new headgear. And I'm not talking about braces headgear, I'm talking about hats. Check out all their gear and links at brimoftheworld.com. 
Hey, real quick, my friends, my art is available for purchase at artbytai.com. So if you like what you're seeing or you want to support the DOD 45 show, the best way for you to do that is to pick up a print or an original at my website. If you're not quite ready to buy, but you still want to help out, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you stream from. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel at Art by Tai and engage in the comments. That goes a long way. All right, enough already. Let's get back to the show. Bye. Welcome back from our from our wonderful fucking sponsors, and uh, here we are sitting with the fellas from the Meter Maids. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you so much for having us on, man. For real. Yeah, super excited to be here. All right. Well, listen, we got we got we're we're here. We're gonna have a good time. I'm gonna set a timer for 45 minutes to do a drawing for you guys. Um, before I do this drawing, though, I do uh, just uh, want to ask um, either of you, what movie can you watch over and over and over and over again? Six Guns, you start, because I got mine. Oh, uh, I guess uh, Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah. Or Gene, Hack Gene Hackman yeah. is like the patriarch and is like uh, in Queens. Tennis? It's, it's, uh, Luke oh. Wilson is like a professional tennis player. Yeah. Yeah. In love with his sister. He's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that at one point he's playing they're like he's taking both of his shoes and one sock off <laughs> classic yeah. okay yeah yeah so i do good. remember that one actually <laughs> and how about you how about you uh i i've driven uh my wife and a lot of my friends crazy because i I'll, i can watch interstellar like over and over and over again if that movie was like six hours of them just going to different weirdo planets, I would be still as in love with it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm surprised you didn't say MacGruber show. Well, that <laughs> like, that goes without saying. Like, <laughs> that one's a given. Magru MacGruber exists, like you know, on a level above. All right. Well, that's good to know. We got we got some movies. Interstellar, though. Yeah, I mean that's a really good movie. But boy, that's a uh, over and over again. Here's here's like a pop up video fact for you, <laughs> the the black hole that they made in Inception, uh huh. That's like the most realistic rend. Like NASA uses that. Like that's the most realistic rendering of a black hole that has ever been put oh. together. I forget how long those frames took to render, but it was like days. You know what I mean? But like NASA uses that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hey, look, we're getting some useless fact knowledge for us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm going to start this timer. I'm going to start working on this drawing. Um, it's uh, based on uh, Rad. And you know what? I, I forgot that the guy's name is Crew in Rad. Yeah, it is. And so I thought it was kind of cool as I was drawing it. This is Crow Crew. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Did, so, yeah, we're going to do a Crow get, Did he get to you ahead of time? To, for the rad theme because that's yeah. so ill <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah oh man yeah i was saying uh, drawing a bike is like one of the hardest things for me to draw but fuck it we're going for it we, <laughs> we, we yeah we have connections with rad on so many levels on so, so many really levels I'm, I'm psyched this is happening right now <laughs> it's so great do you would you i was just telling adrian in the intro that it's um uh, it's kind of like the gleaming the cube for for uh, BMX, but it's kind of cooler than gleaming the cube. Is but it? Is that, you think that's justified? <laughs> <I think it's laughs> gleaming, gleaming the cube, he had like 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 steel grip tape. In that's, in that in, in, in rad, they like it's kind of just like cheesy love story with some really dope BMX in there. But but rad has the only like bmx love scene where they're dancing together on their bikes you know what yeah, i mean yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in that in that love scene you can see the steel poles like holding up the bikes <laughs> while they're doing like the tricks and stuff. that's funny that did not happen to gleaming the cube man that was the well, isn't the lady that just did time wasn't she she's the one that plays his girlfriend L Lori right? laughlin yeah oh that's right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this um, was this was like pre Full house, like OG yeah. Lori Laughlin, son. Yeah, she was. Oh, yeah, she's I the one her. who got in trouble, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, she's the one from yeah, Full House. Yeah, I always liked her, man. She was, she was banging. I liked her. Um, here we go. Let's hit you with some Sophie's choices, since that's a big thing of our show. Um, who would you rather have as a backing band on tour, the Meters or Iron Maiden? 
sentence answer that. Well, you know, I'm going to say Iron Maiden. <laughs> Iron Maiden, yeah, come on. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Well, I guess that's a good choice. I'm, yeah, I'm, it would I'm be a ter- it'd be a, it'd be a terrible show, but it'd yeah. be like a <laughs> cool, back, cool backing band. Yeah. It would be an experience, not not so much a great show, but it would be an experience. And that's what we're going for these days. Just like we were. Well, we no one's going to hear it. So I wait, you don't up. think they put on a good show? Did you? Who, did no, you say they do a great uh, show. I'm just saying, like oh, a meter okay. maids, Iron Maiden mashup show yeah. is awful. It's oh. a terrible idea, but <laughs> <laughs> like my leather assless chaps, like I haven't worn those in years. You know what I mean? Like that. That's gonna be hard to bust out. Are you gonna break them out though for the Strange Fame Fest? <laughs> you might need to. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, what about who would you rather base a th- whole theme tour off of? Mike Myers, the Canadian comedy man, or Mike Myers, the mask serial killer in Haydenfield, Illinois? Six guns. Uh, the killer. I mean, of course. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Does, I, I mean, yeah, I don't even know who the other Mike Myers is. Yeah, you do. He's the um, from Wayne's, Wayne's, Wayne's World. Wayne from Wayne's World. Oh, oh, oh. And, yeah, and all, like, there's only so many Austin Powers jokes you can you can cram <laughs> in there, the right? Powers. Like. One of you could dress as Shrek, and the other one could dress as uh, like. Isn't he? Um, yeah, Wayne's World. Who is? Yeah. Which one is he? Wayne? He's Wayne. He's yeah. Wayne. No one could be Wayne. <laughs> well, they, but no, they're going with they're going to wear masks and and um and I, coveralls. <laughs> I think it's more like conceptually appealing. Uh, we, there's a lot we could do with that, you know, like a lot yeah. of fo- fog and mist and uh, yeah. fake blood get kind of guarish on it. I, I can right. do that. Oh yeah, right. I don't know if you ever heard, but yeah, we just went to a guar, guar show last year. Uh, last year, and Adrian fell asleep. <laughs> you fell asleep at a guar show? Did the blood I, I wake you up? I uh, getting eaten by the alien didn't. <laughs> I was. I'm. Uh, I never was a guar fan. So yeah. I, I just was there. She was just being for the theatrics, of me. but then they kind of were repetitive, and then I was like. Oh, are, are there now. are there Guar fans or are there just people who go oh. to see this crazy? Oh you know, yeah, there I, were people I, who took yeah. their families, and I was like, really? You just oh, wow. do. So we wish we had Guar fans. <laughs> okay, I, I stand corrected. I thought they just went to see the theatrics. <laughs> oh yeah, there were whole family. Like there was this one family that was there. They all wore white shirts, and He's it was a like, fan. I'm, a, I am. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I actually listen. It's on my playlist often. <laughs> Dude, it's war. Okay. There's, there's no shame in that game. <laughs> All right. Who's got better Jamaican raps, Sean Kingston or Sean Paul? Wow. I'm not going to. All right. I'm not going to front the Sean Paul song where he says, and I'm going to be number two. <laughs> <laughs> That's my joint. Like, I love that song. So I'm going. Sean Paul, strictly off that song. It, Sean Kingston's pretty new, right? Is Newer. he Beautiful Girls? Yep, that that's song? the one. Okay. And that yeah. song is catchy as hell. Yeah. Sean Paul always reminds me of um, Girls Gone Wild or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but like those, that was uh, like that club. Videos. Yeah, just that club. That was that song. What was that big, real big song? Uh, oh, like the club. Just like give it me the like, light and start to yeah. go. Such a <laughs> <laughs> He might be. He might be the king of of me singing along, just saying gibberish words because I don't I don't understand a single thing. <laughs> At one time in my one point in my career, when I was uh, doing a lot of uh, film and video, I worked for a company called um, what was that company called? Adrian, the girls. It was like a girls gone wild. Um, Little devils. Little devils, and it, and we Is the, it like the, a the, knockoff. It yes. was kind of, but it was like a clothing line for for women. Like so, the the owner <laughs> to take of the company, off. <laughs> yeah, kind of. No, <laughs> no it, it was, was just like skimpy clothes. Yeah, skimpy but it was model. it was like what you would see girls gone wild yeah. wearing before they've gone wild. Well, and the reason is <laughs> so he, he paid. You he were paid tapping me. into the pre wild market. <laughs> well, he he paid he paid me uh, all these girls 
And um, me and all my homies, we were all security. Well, all my homies were security and me, I was filming, but he took, flew us all out to Vegas to do like them walking down the strip, selling the clothes, like a girl's gone wild kind of thing. And the first club we went to in Lake Havasu was playing that fucking Sean, yeah, that Sean Paul song. Sean Paul. And I don't know, ever since then, I'm like, yeah, this is fucking <laughs> girls gone wild. That was a cra- That was a whole crazy scene back then. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, CVS or Walgreens? Yo, so that's actually, uh, that's an interesting question for me because I, I'm actually banned from my neighborhood CVS. Oh. oh, I know. Sage wanted me to ask you about why. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was, th- I was thinking like, fucker. these guys are not seniors. Why do they care about CVS and Walgreens? No, because I got I got banned from my neighborhood CVS. I'm not going to get into the whole story, <laughs> but I was I still believe I was in the right. So I'm going Walgreens every day of the week, and <laughs> I hope CVS fails as an organization. <laughs> I hope they go under. I think they are right. Uh, like, are they? I think they both are. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. Because everybody's stealing from them. It's like a <laughs> yeah. shop co thing. Yo, everything's like behind back- glass now. Like, yeah. Um. So and- how can we ask how you got banned? No, he said that- he wasn't going to get into it. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. I'll, like, no, I'll, I'll just say like, it, it was a. Uh, it was a disagreement with the pharmacist that that led to um, some choice words being spoken. <laughs> oh. And I was, I was gently escorted out, and then they told my doctor they were no longer accepting prescriptions from me anymore. Oh, okay. You weren't sent out like how um, Axel Foley was sent out of um, the, <laughs> the <laughs> that one place in Beverly Hills. Gone. I didn't. I didn't get DJ Jazzy Jeff. No, like <laughs> they. Uh, <laughs> the guy just sort of came over to me, and he was like, "Dude, what the fuck? Come on." <laughs> <laughs> What um what was your first concert? Sense. Oh, I don't know, man. I never you went really to any know? I never went to any big shows. So like my first concert was probably like Living Legends or something. I don't know, man. It was oh my like, gosh, are you kidding? That's oh just Living Legends. Well no, I but know. I never like it wasn't like I got I just, I didn't go see Bruce Springsteen. I went to see it time with Sean. That was a lot later a lot later. But like no, I didn't go to any big shows. I think like it was some hip hop show. All my shows that I went to were like local small ones. Oh, Jeff, I was probably playing shows Jeff. before I went to any. No, but Adrian, wow. Adrian, you just you just caught on to something very key with sentence where, where he tries to drop like real cool shit, but under the radar like that. So just keep an eye on that right there. Because my shit is embarrassing. My shit is embarrassing. The my the the first concert that I saw was Bush. That's not embarrassing. That's okay. That's not bad. Mine was, jams. mine was Depeche Mode. Depeche that's Mode's good. Though. That's solid, man. Yeah, that's better than Bush. Adrian? MC Hammer. What? Yo! <laughs> that wins. <laughs> Yo, but where did you see where did you see Hammer? Didn't you see him uh, at in Salt Gallery? Lake at the uh, no at like the where they played the basketball? Oh, games Salt and Salt stuff. the Salt Palace. Yeah. Yeah. Did he have like two hundred people on stage with him? It was yeah, it was a lot of dancers. And then when like I was pretty young, I was in fifth grade. And when he started like humping the floor, I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, these are some dance moves. Was it, was I don't it, even know. He's acting weird. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the floor? I, I was What's wrong with the floor? <laughs> What, what what didn't uh, I adore Mia Moore? Weren't they opening for him at that time? I don't know. Adrian? No, I would have known. Um, Belle Bib DeVoe? No. Uh, yeah. Oh, that that was the other three, not Who, Boys to Men. ABC? Wait, no. wait, Joe to see. No, I think I adore me. Color me bad. Um, color me bad. Oh, wow. <laughs> I would have known that. I liked them more than I liked no, MC that's Hammer. What they were opening for Boys to Men at, uh, mm. yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm you sorry. go, you go back and listen to those Boys to Men jam. They still hold up, dude. Th- those guys could sing. Yeah, absolutely. They really do, and they still sing pretty good or well. 
<laughs> dude, end of the road, um, like that that can still like make me emotional if I'm in the right mood. That tugs at the heartstrings. I'm surprised people aren't using I've I don't think I've ever heard samples. That's a there. great point. I wonder if it's unlocked like that, you know, like oh. Yeah, like a like a prince or something, you know. Yo. Maybe you know what? Someone might own them. I think actually doesn't prince own well, shit, I don't prince know. I don't know if Prince owns anything. Shower. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he fell down in the shower and didn't get back up. Um, hey, who would you rather have a chance to make an album with? Um, Nas or The Boss? And I said Nas wrong, but it sounded better to sound it like that with The Boss. Oh, that's a question for Sean. Yeah, dude. Like, I, I, would, uh, I would sacrifice an appendage to be in the room with the boss, man. I, I grew up, I grew up in Jersey. Like, Oh, you did. Okay. I, I, uh, with both my kids, like the song I used to sing them to sleep with was thunder road. Like, I, I don't know. He, he, he threw the single greatest concert I've ever seen in my life at Madison square garden. It's the first time I've ever seen someone in an arena. Tell the tell the light guy to just turn the house lights on for the whole show, just oh, wow. so everybody could see each other. But yeah, no, that's <laughs> like some extra shit to me. And I love Nas, love, love, love Nas. But that's well, like, uh, I, yeah, I, I would defile myself to, to be able to do things, something with Bruce. <laughs> the boss is like a he's like a real genuine dude, like as famous as he is. He's so genuine. You can totally tell. Did and you, I, did I you think s- he said he just recently said he's ending that residency in at Madison Square. Yeah. Oh, um, that's wait, that's Billy Joel. Oh, did you see um, I, uh the bo- did you see Bruce's interview with Howard Stern? No. Oh, it's fucking great. It's on. It's on HBO. They, it was such a great interview. They they released released it on uh, HBO. It's worth watching, dude. Because he gets really um, he's way open and he's like talking about how he writes music. Oh, it's a really fantastic Yo, interview. That's so. The interview dope. just happened. Yeah, it's Thank really you. awesome. Thank you for letting me know that. Like, yeah, um, for sure. And I I was and it's funny because I I. Do you think you have to be Jersey tight to be like a, a like a diehard boss fan? I guess not, right? But I don't no. know. I it, like his it. his music is is like it's about the hope that there's something better out there for you, right? And yeah. It's so like to me it's like super duper universal and that's why he could have a show with the house lights on cuz like everybody's on the same wavelength you know what i mean uh yeah i would have liked to see his uh broadway show i heard that was awesome too yo you could um my sister and mom saw it which i'm hella jealous of but you could watch i think it was on netflix for a while that shit that shit uh made me tear up man like it was super emotional yeah that's how i feel about mike tyson's broadway show it was, that was the, i made me tear up <laughs> yeah. like Dude has a crazy story. Yeah. I got a Mike Tyson question for a little bit later on. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I was going to – the, the Nas thing came up, obviously, from your guys' track because I really dig the um, advice I know you won't follow. I, I love the song. I love the lyrics and particularly the line, uh, Nas is the best MC. He just picks shitty beats. I fucking love that because <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> No. Bruce Springsteen is the truth. I used to sing on the road when I rock you to sleep. Remember people's names when you meet. Nas the best MC. He just picks shitty beats. So excellent job with that, fellas. Um, that's uh, wait, is that your 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 child in the video? Yeah. So that's my first. Yeah. Um, and I've got two now, two boys. Uh, Eli, who's in the video. He, he must have been two or three at the time. Now he's a he's eleven now, which is he's in the sixth grade. That doesn't make any sense. And my youngest just turned nine, and Sentence has a daughter now. Uh, so that song has like, oh, it, I don't know. It has a whole new meaning to it. I listened to it the other day because because we're getting ready for the show in Denver, and it it made it made me feel just because. Now, now, sentence and I are both parents. 
Are you going to suffer from, I don't know if you saw our last uh, discussion with uh, Sage Francis, but he was talking about how he was uh, performing some songs and and started to cry and he did not like that that was he didn't like that <laughs> are you guys gonna because when was the last time you guys played a it's show not, together this isn't gonna be the strange famous fest it's gonna be the strange cry fest no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a very real possibility yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry you were asking a real question though so we, when's, when's the, the last, last show we played together baby the last time we show we played a show was 2016, November 2016. Wow. And, when was uh, the last time you guys were in a room to get like uh, in the same space? We, I saw Sean. I was in New York last December, what, 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 six months ago, and we were in a the same room for like I don't know all of 20 minutes. No, and then, no. It, 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 that was a solid hour. Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. It's a solid hour. And then before that, tears were shed. Tears were shed then. Yes, tears were shed. And then before that, it was my wedding, which was 2018. So in the last uh, six years, we've been in the same room twice. Wow. Yeah. wow. So that the, was like, that last show, was that two presidents ago then? It was it before Trump? Yeah, it was pre-Trump. November, November 2016 was the election, wasn't it? Yep. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's almost a lifetime ago. Well, it is yeah, a lot has happened. That's such a crazy thought. It makes it feel, it makes that feel so far further back in the past than I thought. Yeah, when you start thinking of like two presidents ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and just crazy. and just like life before Trump, right? Like since yeah. Trump, everything's been nuts all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's true. It, it was. It's been a whirlwind, and then yeah. COVID, and then yeah, it's just been crazy. It's just been a constant. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like ever since nine eleven, it's just been a constant. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh. Uh. What? In, in, let's see. Yeah, I'll change that. So you guys, <laughs> when you get together for the first time, I mean, when are you guys flying in? Friday? No, I'm flying in on Saturday, like this Saturday, because my family lives there, so I'm gonna go okay. early. And, and then what are you? When are you flying in? And then I think I'm flying in on either Thursday or Friday. So you Thir guys can get together, reacquainted, and like. Yeah, they're coming to stay with me. In Denver, uh, at my at my dad's house. So like, well, yeah, sending. You're you're originally are, are you you're originally from Denver, right, or something, right? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, I spent like a lot of my childhood in Colorado and in Denver. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like Denver. That's cool. That that's a great place for Strange Famous Fest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Every show that we've ever been lucky enough to to play out there as part of Strange Famous has been mem like incredibly memorable. Every single one. Um, and I think what, what sentence was just saying, just, just the fact that our families will be in the, in the same house for a few days, like I'm, I'm looking forward to that as much as I'm looking forward to the show. Like we, you know, yeah. Cause I bet your families, I mean like your kids and stuff probably don't really know each other, but they probably know exactly. I've heard so much about one another. The, and the, and the crazy thing is. When when I had kids, like me and Sentence, we talked about how he should be the cool uncle who pulls mm. up like every six months and was like, oh, I just got stabbed in Calcutta, you know what I mean, over a dice game and like, and he has become that for my kids. Like, oh well, you got stabbed? No, but no, no. no. Like, just he, like, he shows up. He yeah. shows up on a motorcycle. Both my kids are like, "This is the coolest dude alive." Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I've, I've, I've like cultivated this mystique with his kids. So yeah. Yo, it, it's, it's, to live it's up so to real, it. and they yeah. talk and they talk about him constantly, constantly. Oh, that's awesome! So that's gonna be real fun then. Yeah, being in, being in the same space. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I I don't even know. Like I've I've just become gotten way friendly with the whole strange famous family so when i think of this show happening it's i feel like wow this is going to be something it's bigger than just like a bigger than hip-hop big yeah, still bigger than hip-hop <laughs> <laughs> but it's just i don't know but i don't know i don't know if like uh, like just fans will feel that way but i don't know i i, I think it's fucking awesome and i hope that it continues on I really appreciate yeah. that. And I think I feel like uh, especially since the pandemic, like life's simple pleasures, just going to a dope hip hop show, like 
Just, mm-hmm. everybody, we took it for granted, right? Like, mm-hmm. you, like there's a nostalgic element to it. And, and uh, it's also just dope to go to a great show. I, you know what I mean? Like, we got, everybody was so spoiled for so long that, you know, your favorite artist might come into town, but you're like, oh, I'm, I'm tired from work or whatever. But it's like, post pandemic, if anything remotely cool is happening, I'm there. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's what we've been doing. We were, well, also our kids are now 17, 16, so they're older enough we can just kind of bell on them, but, <laughs> <laughs> or bring them with us. But yeah, that is, it's really happening. And Adrian was saying earlier this year, right? Adrian, she was saying she thinks this is going to be the big year for like, for shows, for, 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 for a few musician artists. Yeah. yeah. Just because people are going to, for a little bit there, people, some people were like still not comfortable going into a show with large crowds, but that, that seemed, that's changed. And I don't know. Yeah. I think it's going to be a big, big year for shows as well. It, it feels like there's like this big reemergence of everyone like coming out and being like active and creative again. And like my perspective is super different because I was just in a shell for like five years and completely out of the scene. So maybe it's just me thinking that, oh, everyone is the same way. We're all just coming back out. But like the like what I've been seeing is like everyone is just like starting to be like super productive and like having like this really cool mindset where like like it's it feels really collaborative and it feels really supportive and positive in a way that I personally don't think I felt before. And like it, it's like this new energy. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah, I like what you just said there. Did you did hip hop seem a little uh, like underground hip hop, or just hip hop in general, or music in general? Didn't it, did it before pre pandemic felt a little more cutthroat, but now it seems like everyone's kind of like, yeah, we're all we're all in this together. Let's a hundred percent. Like, and I think that like that's what Strange Famous Fest is. Is like, I mean, this is a. Uh, we're all, we all have benefited from Sage being the man that he is. You know what I mean? But th- this is a group of like some of the best dudes on earth. Um, and everybody's old enough now that no one feels like they have anything to prove. And it, like, like, sense, like Sentence was saying, it just feels like it's gotten back to the organic, just being super excited to hear your friend make a dope song. You know what I mean? Like all of these really simple pleasures that you did, like uh, didn't care enough about like the pandemic really brought everything into perspective. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, no, that, and, and it's not, you know, sentence that's not a show. Like that is, that is very real. And I, and I also think music is cyclical. Like I think that, Sage Francis fans, like myself and Sentence included, are now parents. And I play my kids Sage Francis music all the time. You know what I I mean? I know. So I think like there's a whole new generation of kids who are going to be coming up um, having been exposed to this um, genre of music. And, you know, we've all sort of aged (laughs) well in, in, in the sense that like, we just do like we fuck with the people that we love and we you know i write songs because i want i want to hear what sentence is gonna do on it you know what i mean like like this is the essence right it's like the most basic thing that's important well and now now it's gonna just now uh Now everyone's just going to be able to get up on stage and cry it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to cry. It's possible. It might happen. We're, we're doing, we're doing like, a, you know, mostly bangers. We're not going to cry. We're like getting all hyped, but like there's maybe a song or two where we yeah. have a tear. There, there was definitely one we discussed where it was like, I would love to do this song. I don't feel confident I will be able to do this song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. And only well and only well adjusted and, and people who've been through it are able to actually like comfortably cry about it. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like the and I'm sure you guys it's the same. Like there's the people that you came up with and grinded with and, and you've all been through the same experience and it's like rather rather than feeling like you're competing 
you know, with the mm. with the passing of time, you come back together and you're like, that shit was crazy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. remember sleeping on that promoter's floor? Like, remember remember that fight in that club? Like, that shit was nuts. <laughs> yeah, those are they're all banked memories. Yeah, it's fucking yeah, it's that's what happens when you get on this side of the of the experience. <laughs> right. We're, uh, we're on the downhill slope. <laughs> well, I, I, I always think it's the up, but <laughs> um, here, let me uh, throw in before we go into some useless facts and a few other things. I'll throw a couple more um, Sophie's choices at you. Um, okay. In, in an adventure meter maids biopic. Oh no, let's do this one in an off Broadway meter maid biography production starring Brooke Shields mm -hmm. and Lin-Manuel Miranda. Okay. Who would play which? Who would play swell and who would play sentence? <laughs> Rich Shields is is Sean. Yeah, <laughs> of course. You're Lin, no. You're no. Lin Manuel. No, <laughs> you disagree. <laughs> don't even don't even fuck with me, sentence. <laughs> well, I get Brooke Shields. I mean, nothing wrong with that. I just I don't know. I don't see it, dude. <laughs> Well, in the way, and uh, and also the way that Lin Manuel's hair is go going right now. I was like, yeah, yeah, yours set, yeah. And you've got dimples. <laughs> it's more like it, like it's more like sends Brooke Shields, and I'm like Shrek, like we were talking about before. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let's turn this. So, if it's an adventure meter maids biopic, a movie, Sean Penn and Sean Bean play the roles of Swell and Sentence. Which of you? Does Sean Penn play? Nice. <laughs> Who's got Sean Penn vibes? Me. Yo, and that's actually that's a dope idea for a biopic. <laughs> should we should we should we um what's that word? Should we um uh, 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 uh try to get that done? Yeah. I can't remember what the word. Uh get it greenlit. <laughs> can we get that greenlit? <laughs> Sean, I don't I don't disagree that you get Sean Penn, but I get Sean B. Yo. <laughs> You literally, right now, you sort of look like him in Lord of the Rings, son. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got, like, Lord of the Rings vibes. Right? right? Yeah. I, I think I'm Dude, using you, him with somebody you, else. You, you look like, you, right now, you look like you could, like, wield I the sword well. He was the bow and arrow guy, wasn't he? No, on he, Lord no, of the Rings? He's the no sword, he was, he's he was sword nice guy. with the sword. the sword. Okay. Yeah, he's the human that, that protects them. Oh, the, that guy. I was thinking yeah. some like old British guy. Yeah, okay. No. <laughs> yeah, Gandalf. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> You're Michael Caine. <laughs> uh, hey, um, let's do a useless fact real quick since uh, it's part of the show. I don't know why I keep squeezing them in, but I feel like I have to now with my OCD. Uh, so you guys know of... Um, uh, Gold Coast Meter Maids. Have you guys ever heard of the Gold Coast Meter Maids? Yes, because anytime you Google Meter Maids, you see the Gold Coast Meter <laughs> <Nope>. Maids. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that now. Yeah, well, I'll just tell you, Adrian, you don't even have to Google it. This is the fact. Uh, well, so an entrepreneur named Bernie Elsie funded the Surfer's Paradise Meter Maids in 1964 when the Gold Coast City Council introduced paid parking into Surfer's Paradise. So the companies were worried that that five cents an hour would scare away the tourists from Brisbane. So they started the courtesy maids, aka the meter maids, and the, uh, these were all these chicks. They'd walk around the streets. Oh my gosh, they're in golden yeah, bikinis. Yeah, in golden bikinis with jeweled tiaras, <laughs> feeding parking meters. But they they were estimated that they were. It was estimated they were preventing a, um, a half a million dollars in parking fines the by doing that, paying for millions of visitors uh, parking when they when people would park their car. So uh, I don't know if they still do it. I'm pretty sure they still exist. I think but they do. Yeah, you can like people get their pictures taken with them, and yeah, wow. dude, it makes it makes the um, Google image search for meter maids fucking confusing. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, like two dudes, two dudes, two dudes, well, yeah. bunch of girls in bikinis, two dudes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, have have either of you ever been attacked by a wild animal? Uh, I had a I had a I had a mole once <laughs> like so one time we caught in my backyard when I was living in California and I was a kid we caught this little wild animal and my 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 brother's friend was like oh it's an aardvark was like oh cool it's an aardvark I didn't know what an aardvark was I mean it's like this little guy like this turns out it wasn't an aardvark it was a really angry mole and I put my finger in there to try and pet the aardvark and I pulled my finger up and it was like hanging my finger like this oh, I was like pulling like a cartoon move. <laughs> 
Yo, I love it. You have the worst Darwinian instincts of all time. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to jam my finger in there. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to pet this aardvark. Aardvark's a pill. <laughs> nope. Aardvarks are like... <laughs> Turns out it wasn't an aardvark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not even close wow. to the same species. Also, I wouldn't imagine a mole would bite you. Yeah. yeah. They probably had rabies. <laughs> It's possible. Yeah, did you ever get that addressed? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't try to break through the skin. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, what, hey, what sounds doper? Sean Connery or Con Shonery? <laughs> <laughs> the latter. That's, I don't know why that's so dope, but it is. Come on. <laughs> hey, Alexander Brown told me that the making of your guys' new album has been magical. That's what he's, those were his words, magical. How y'all feeling about it? It has been, yeah. It's, it's yeah. been amazing. I, I don't know, how, Sean? How long have you guys been working on it? It's, uh, it's probably been like almost a year on the nose, but... Is it no, a secret project? It, it like, it started out, it started out, um, AB put out, glow kid which was which is such an amazing record if if you listen to it um mopes's song on that is off the wall sage's song is on that is off the wall like i'm i'm on one with jesse jesse i think jesse's so dope um and that's how me and ab got introduced and you know, Senton sort of alluded to this before, but, you know, he's, he's, we've been in two different locations. This is after being, you know, basically hetero life mates for 15 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we had been in different locations and, and we had sort of fallen out of touch just because that's what life does, right? Like mm -hmm. we both, we both have kids and work full time. Um, but, I started writing to them and I started hearing sentences voice over them and the whole, the whole experience, like, you know, I got, I got my best friend back through this experience. You know what I mean? Uh, like, like, like we talked about before we, when he was able to come into New York, like, I don't know. The, 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 the pandemic has, 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 helped me realize what I should be prioritizing in my life. And, and a lot of that is the relationships with the people that you love. And, you know, I feel like, like I said, I got, I got my best friend back through this yeah. project and you can sort of hear it happen on the record. And, and at the same time, got a new, you know, a new best friend in AB whose production I just think is like so fantastic. And I hadn't had a creative thought in my head for eight years until I started hearing his beats. There was something about him. They sounded uh, so nostalgic and dusty and right. Yeah, that's a good, uh, yeah, dusty. The, yeah, like I, I, I think that we could probably talk about the story of this album for like multiple podcasts. So like this, this, this short version of it, I think for me is like, I, I hadn't really decided whether or not I was gonna like make music, and I, I, I literally didn't listen to hip hop for five years. Like I didn't listen to any of it. I was, I was completely out of touch. The, the Alexander Brown thing came out. I didn't even know it was there. I didn't know Sean did this track. I didn't know who Alexander Brown was, and then. Sean, sometime over that period of time, Sean had hit me up because he's like recorded some EP and he's like, oh, maybe we should like do like a split EP where we each do a solo thing. And I was like, ah, oh, maybe, I don't know. And that's the only time we'd ever talked about making music over that whole time. And then he started sending me these, these he's like, I'm doing this, this thing. I really want to do a Meter Maids album. And, and he, he was sending me these tracks and it was like, this is it. Like this, this is like, I, I was hearing Sean's Sean's like writing in a whole new way and it was like so real and it was so perfect with what AB was doing 
like in a, in a way that like I think we've been striving for for a long time and that we definitely needed after this and it was the only way that this would have happened is over over Alexander Brown beats like uh it, it was something about it like the stars just aligned and it was like yeah we need to do this and and so um the whole thing has been so fun and so organic and it's just like yeah natural like natural, so easy sure. and, yeah yeah. Well, then he ain't lying. He wasn't lying. He said he like he really those were the words he used magical. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And yeah. I guess there's no way of knowing exactly when that's going to be coming out. But it is. Imagine exciting. imagine if it drops and it's the wackest shit you've ever heard. <laughs> and then you go back and listen to this podcast. <laughs> I doubt it because it sounds like you both did some growing up yeah. during this time. And you both had life experiences and real things to not that your other stuff isn't real things to say, but you had more real things to say and that you wanted to, that you probably didn't even know you wanted to express. Well, and I can, and I would say, cause I was even saying in the intro, if, if, if it's anything like the change from nightlife to we, uh, we brought knives, then I'm, we're guaranteed to, to know that there's growth because the growth between those two albums is so apparent and so significant that it just it's it's exciting to know that you guys uh take your growth and you do something good with it just your uh personal growth your personal everything so i yeah i'm that's fucking, so that's so appreciated Ty. like that's such a nice thing to say brother thank you well i mean it, <laughs> Yo. it could, there's no way it could be shitty <laughs> <laughs> not with alexander brown that's true yeah no <laughs> no and on that tip too like you know we wanted to make the whole record the whole record is about this crew of people that we came up with and have done shows with for a decade so you've got almost everybody on strange faint like sage is on two tracks he absolutely kills it uh mopes is on a track seas is on a track Cass is on a track uh early's on a track like jesse's on a track jesse yeah jesse crushes it um everybody i don't know you like it i feel like the energy was there that it got it it sort of brought the best out of everybody because it's a nostalgic record but we're old enough to have a sense of humor about it you know what i mean yeah. so uh it, it's I, just like a lot of real like adult shit <laughs> that's but what i we think are, that, though you know yeah and i think that's one of your guys's or at least, you know, I mean, I, you know, we don't know, I don't know you personally, but just from listening to your music, it seems like a quality that you guys have is um, uh, being able to have fun with it, even if it's dark material or whatever, you're able to sort of um, understand the lighter side of it, or at least, um, oh, shit, I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm, what I'm trying to say there. I'm not the, uh, the rapper. No, right? it's all good. Listen, that, that's something we like. We learn that from the best, right? Like that. That's what Stage Francis like does probably better than anybody in the world is is tell you a sad story and make you laugh at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You guys are on a perfect. That's a perfect label for you guys. Hey, who who survives longer in a real life Shaun of the Dead scenario? Sean Hannity or Sean Astin? Well, he, one's already dead for sure. No, I don't know who no, the other one is. No, Sean, Sean Hannity. <laughs> Sean dead. Hannity. I mean, <laughs> I don't know the I, other guy. I hate to speak ill so, of a person, but <laughs> I feel like like Sean Hannity like is like a pretend karate dude, and he carries all the, like he has a gun on him at all times. Oh, but I sure. actually think that his hubris would lead to him. Get dying it. earlier <laughs> he, he's so confident that he's you gonna know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. he'd be like do you know who you're messing with i'm sean hannity yeah. <laughs> sean astin adrian uh, is um he's the uh he's in strange he's rudy. a boyfriend of stranger oh, rudy. things oh, he, he's rudy, oh, rudy. He's, yeah uh, he's the he's the goonies I think he's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his, <laughs> he's got he's got tenacity and and he's quick. I think mean, he could he could do it. He'll, he'll come up with the and, and, and like pretty... the movies he's been in have sort of already given him tips. You know what I mean? Set him up for it. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Sean Hannity's hubris is getting him fucking killed first. 
Uh, let's take a question, or let's hear. Uh, oh. Let's hear what Sage Francis. He was doing. A, he, let's hear his social media lurk on you guys. Meet a maids in the house. And what up, Adrian and Ty? Dod forty five. I'm glad. Everyone could come together for this one. People are very excited that Meter Maids are back in action. I think the general consensus was Meter Maids had broken up and Senna's disappeared. Swell is out tweeting about random shit. Um, <laughs> uh, speaking of Swell and, and his tweets, he's the, he's the more social media active member of the Meter Maids. And he uses Twitter in a way... I always wanted people to use Twitter. I think it's the, the best way to do it. I mean, it's, it's never too serious uh a lot of funny takes a lot of interesting angles um but one in particular when I, while i was lurking your twitter feed last night uh in 2017 swell tweeted baseball is like oh shit opening day okay check in three million games from now to see who's in the playoffs <laughs> your grandkids will be amped <laughs> well Let's talk sports. Why not? I mean, you're one of the strange, famous members I get to talk sports with. Um, with baseball making the changes um, with the pitch clock and kind of speeding up the game, making the game shorter, uh, I see more interest in, in baseball. I'm wondering if your kids ever watch games on TV, if you think that will continue to happen, or is it like a done deal, like baseball's over, honestly. It's like maybe... You know, after our generation and the one uh, younger than us dies out, is that does baseball go with it? It's a tough game to dedicate yourself to as a fan with how many games they play and how long the games are. But like I said, I, d I did see a, a upkick, uh, uptick in interest in baseball and um, with the pitch clock stuff. But the Red Sox are awful again, so I I'll check back next year. <laughs> Can't wait to see you guys at the Strange Famous Fest. Let's hang and um, make some more music together. You guys are keeping me active in the vocal booth. I appreciate that. Love y'all. Strange Famous! Oh, awesome. Before, Yo, uh, how, like, how, how could you not love this man? Also, no. <laughs> sentence, were you at all expecting like that deep of a question coming at the end of that? No. <laughs> no. I, I didn't even know baseball well, was going through a thing. You know I, what I was going to ask? Yeah, because I don't, uh, you know, we have the Cardinals here, but uh, well, I don't know what the, what's the pitch clock? What did they do? So, so they, there's a timer now, you know, like before a pitcher could walk around the mound like play with the little powder thing you know they took could okay. take their time before they threw a pitch but they're trying to speed the game up so yeah. oh. you you know you got to throw a pitch every 10 seconds or something like that wow so my honest answer to sage is i i think that that's helping Me and too. also and like my youngest has been playing baseball and there's a lot of kids playing baseball right mm -hmm. now man I, I don't know if it'll ever go away. It's like a real simple sport. Like, you you know, someone throws a ball and you whack it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Our neighbor over here, he's yeah. out there He's out there throwing uh, throwing a ball with his son. His son's really good. Yeah, he's out there throwing a ball with him every day. It's awesome. Yeah. No, uh, I think, uh, like, I think my point still stands. Like, 100, like, 70 games or whatever it is, like, that's insane. You know what I mean? Like, but, uh, is no. That how many I, are I, in a season? There's a lot, right? Yeah. Oh. It, I mean, it, it starts in the summer and it's like a six month sport or something like that. It's crazy. Um, but it did need to get sped up because it was it notor it, notoriously slow. slow. Yeah. Well, they did that with basketball. They, they put in the, the shot clock and that sped up basketball. So. While we're talking sports, let me ask you a real quick question. Uh, or did you did you have uh, did you have anything you wanted to follow up on that sentence? <clears throat> I don't I don't I don't I don't care about sports. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, the sentence about the sports guy. I don't care. <laughs> well, here's a sports one. One on one, Sean Kemp versus Sean Bradley. Who wins? Yeah. yeah. How eerie is how eerie is that sentence? That, that that's weird. Yo, I, I just texted him about Sean Kemp last night, I think. 
Oh, wow. Well, and and, yeah, well, then he's like, you don't know who Sean Kemp is. I was like, I know who Sean Kemp is. I not, I well, I think I think Sean Bradley just died, or he's in a wheelchair. He had an. He's uh, not fair to what uh, yo Sean Sean Kemp would would dog walk him. Are you kidding yeah, me? Like yeah. he was a bad man when he was. Yeah, Sean Bradley is like seven five. <laughs> I think I think he's taller than that. Like yeah. <laughs> he's a big dude, but he he weighed he's like seven, a buck thirty. Seven, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Well, my timer just went off. So before I'm going to, I missed a bunch of questions, but I don't really care because I, I want to get the dish in because the dish is fun for me. Hell yeah. But let me throw in two other. Who would you, who would you rather see enter the ring with Mike Tyson, Mike Huckabee or Mike Pence? Oh my God. <laughs> Huckabee every day of the week, every day of the week. Cause he's gonna he's gonna try some like dad joke shit beforehand, and when he gets blasted, it, it's gonna be like transcendent. <laughs> it is. I know when you said that, I'm picturing like him get Huckabee getting punched in the gut and watching all this like the food he ate earlier that morning just spill <laughs> out of his mouth. <laughs> I don't know why, but <laughs> what about who win, Who wins in an underwear mud wrestling match between Michael Moore and Mike Lindell? <laughs> oh, Michael Moore. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I can see it happening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he would just be like, I don't even care. I'm just going to kill you. Either way, that's a horrifying fight. <laughs> Hey, I was watching the girls in music video. Um, you know, the uh, meter maids versus um, animal. Animal collective. Animal, co animal yeah. collective. Yeah. Uh, and in the video, the, the shoes hanging on the on the wire. And uh -huh. so it's a constant, not constant, but it's always a debate with Adrian and I. But um, from where you guys are from, either what what uh, what's the official meaning of the shoes on the wire? It, for me, that's it, it means someone got killed there. That's what I. That's what I. Where, like, what I would. Yeah. Knew. Like yeah, in some I mean, neighborhoods, like that, it, it's it's where you could find the drugs, right? Yeah, but yeah. like every, in all of my experiences, somebody got killed there. What in that video when you got that video is so cool? I don't know. I think it's just cool with the the side by side with the writing. But Thank were you, you specifically writing underneath the wire where the shoes were hanging? Because there's a lot of it happening. No, there. we <laughs> we 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 just like tried to find a way to rig cameras onto the bikes and like okay. we just rode around in circles wherever we happened to be in Brooklyn. Like we were by my old apartment and like whatever was in the background was in the background. It was totally random. Oh, okay. Um, I've had this question in banked for a long time. I haven't been able to use it with anyone. And since we're, I'm going to get right to the dish and then we'll let you guys get out of here. I do want to ask this question. And maybe you guys have the answer since you guys are fun and playful. So pink made a hit, at, you know, pink, right? So she made a hits album. Two songs on the album had never been heard. Is that a smart move or a greasy move? <laughs> Wait, run that by. I mean, so, so she, Pink, she put out a she put out a hits album. Right. Two of the songs on the album had never been heard. They were <laughs> never, they never existed. That's they were new, new songs that she she put on there. That's just and, and she just that, declared them hits like that's, outright. That's ballsy as fuck, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I'm, these, I'm with that. These are hits. I'm 100 with. Maybe they were bonus tracks. No, she put. They were just. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Listen, I was just wondering. If it's a hit, it's a hit, baby. <laughs> she she should know by now which ones yeah, are hits. I guess right? so. Yeah, do you know do you know better than Pink? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, let's hit you with the dish. These are random. How do we want to do this? I guess. I don't even know what the dish is. It's one I just yeah, that, I know. I just it's a rapid fire questions. Is. We're just dishing. We're just getting the dish. But uh, but yeah, well shit. I'll just at the same time. Dude's like both Whatever, shoot. yeah. Yeah, okay. however you guys want to do them. Okay. All right, here we go. Favorite professional wrestler. Under the Giant. I second that emotion. Favorite comedian. Favorite comedian uh Mitch Hedberg. Yo, he 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 brought us through many tours. Uh mine is Chappelle, straight up. Favorite rapper. Black Thought. 
uh, on the smallest sample size, I'm going to say uh, Breezley Bruin. Oh, nice. But also, like, you said Black Thought, and I was like, fuck. Yeah. You know, because that's the hardest question in the world in Black Thought, and there's so many rappers that I love, but, like, they're not consistently good, or, like, there's so many yeah. holes in their, in their catalog. No, like, you, you, could put, you could put there. Black Thought on any song, and he's going to tear that shit up. Oh, like, and any song he's ever done, is never. It's ne he's never come up short. Ever. Yeah. Right? It's never, he, he's never been, right, he's never been the issue, ever. No, yeah, never. Uh, favorite TV sitcom? Uh, Seinfeld, all day. Seinfeld, all day. I love you, money. <laughs> <laughs> favorite visual artist? My favorite visual artist is my friend, uh, Eeks. He's a, a graffiti writer in Denver. He's like one of my best friends and he's dope. I'm I I'm not intelligent enough to give an answer here and would like to pass. Thank you. <laughs> you know you know Eeks. You can say that you can agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I listen, I trust what sentence is saying hundred <laughs> percent. You're going you're rolling with sentence. Favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? <laughs> uh Predator. Because you can't mess with like the arm ripoff scene. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say True Lies, but Predator's better. I'm going with oh. Predator. Yeah, but do it, do small. Do it slowly. <laughs> I'm looking, I love Arnold. <laughs> so uh, good. He's got so many good ones, son. It's so good. Uh, favorite cereal? Uh, Lucky Charms. But I'm not really. You're not a cereal guy. No. I'm a huge cereal guy, and it, like this is like almost like sentence with me and you it's like uh one of those matchmaking shows i would say lucky charms or <laughs> if i'm feeling responsible rice krispies i don't know that it does <laughs> it's just rice <laughs> yeah, block oh, it out block yeah, it out yeah no it's fortified don't worry <laughs> the iron in it here i'm gonna slip this one in favorite planet oh shit like mars i like mars i'm going with mars i'm going jupiter I'm Jupiter? going. I'm going huge, kid. It has yeah. a huge. The red spot. What does Mars got? Mars doesn't Mars, have shit. Mars back in the day had the potential for Martians. No. Yeah. I slipped that question in as a trick question to see if you guys are actually Earthlings, because um, <laughs> <laughs> humans say Earth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst smell? Vomit. People yeah. vomit. That's yeah. a bad one. There's. A block in Chinatown that I can't name off the top, but whatever that smell is. <laughs> uh, mothballs? Yeah, oh, is it mothballs or is it no, the No, there's like a lot of food, a lot oh. of food, oh. like mixtures of it food. It looks like buckets with like uh, milkyish water. In. I don't want to talk about it. What's the worst sound? Uh, the worst sound in the world is a, a cat in heat. <laughs> oh, that is bad. It's yeah. my least favorite sound in the world. I, I hate it so much. I would say an empty dump truck like hitting a pothole or something oh all the rattling that yeah, goes on just like that mm. hard thunder rattle wake you up every time yeah we mm. got one right a dumpster right behind our house every six o'clock in the morning that it's, it's like aggressive too it makes you like you wake up and you're like oh, i want to fucking fight <laughs> <laughs> Who was your first crush? Uh, Christina Applegate, for sure. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. For Married, Married with Children? children. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I would say Peppa from Salt and Peppa. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, what was the last movie you watched? Uh, Dune was the last movie I watched, I think. I don't know. We're going to go see the new Spider-Man tomorrow, though. Hey. My kids went and saw it yes, or two days ago. They loved it. It's I dope, it. right? It's they supposed said to be. 10. 10 out of 10. Hey, oh. quickly, do you guys, who's doing the scratching on that? Do, I don't know who, I don't know who does like the, the beats on it. Do you guys have any idea? They said the album was awesome. Yeah. The score. Yeah. They, to, they told us the name of the DJ. It was, uh, it was kind of a funny name. It was Buddy Peace. Just kidding. <laughs> he's on the new. I was about to say, <laughs> <laughs> if he's doing that, why the hell is he returning my emails? <laughs> What was your first car? My first car was a 1987 Honda Accord with like the flip up lights. Oh, they when it turned off, the lights would close. Yeah, but then eventually yeah. they break, and so like they only turn, they only come up when you accelerate really fast. It's so like room, and then when you slow down, they, they close like that. Yeah. 
I had a gold Saturn stick shift that had 150,000 miles on it and the speakers on the left side were broken. So I would listen to songs in other people's cars and hear shit. I'd be like, what? There's oh, horns yeah. in this song. <laughs> <laughs> you were hearing all sorts of sounds that you didn't know That's existed. That's funny. I'm like, what? <laughs> hey, speaking of the light, the light out is is per diddle. Was that a is that a universal thing? Per diddle? Yeah, I remember that. Per diddle? Yeah, I I wasn't sure if that was only like in our hometown or if everyone did the you know holler out per diddle <clears throat> from a one I, light. I don't remember there being an R in it. For me, it was just oh. a per, per diddle. Oh really? Ours was yeah. per diddle. That's weird. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? I was just having this conversation with our kids because I was reading a book and something said it's catty corner to the whatever. Oh, yeah. And we're we kitty. Said kitty. We say kitty corner. But how hmm. did the cat turn into the kitty or catty corner? It's not, but it's C-A-D-D-Y catty no, corner. No, it's K. I, oh. It is. It's catty corner, right? We say kitty corner. We say kitty corner. Like kitty, like from a kitty, a kitty corner. Oh. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah, I would say catty corner. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it could be per diddle. What did you say? Per diddle. 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 <laughs> yeah, but they also say they also say when they're washing their clothes, they're washing them. Well, there's like <laughs> logie. Or loogie. And loogie. Yeah. What do logie. you guys do? Do you guys? We say logie. Logie. I've never heard that. Yeah, like. A, a like snotty, you, a snotty like spit, you're, loogie. You're hawking a logie. Yeah, we say logie. We hawk logie. Oh, that's ill. <laughs> <laughs> we you say loogie. Hawk. Logie's like such a thicker Wait, word, say, right? Like that's so. <laughs> it's such a grosser word. It's a fucking logie. I'm hawking a logie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. That's so that's so how we've always said it. <laughs> what was your first job? I was a I was a dishwasher at a university, which was just like a magnet for degenerates. Like I was like 15, so it's like 15 year old kids, people who couldn't work anywhere else. And like, I don't know. It was not a not a great place. <laughs> Uh, on, on the same shit, I, I was a short order chef at a community pool working with the same exact oh. people, like being 14 and having like a 40 year old man with two teeth be like, yo, you got to smoke like a bum. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Yo, that, aren't those movies that come out like where a kid's working at the local swimming pool on the summer swimming pool and like their boss is the guy. Aren't those the best movies? Like everyone... <laughs> Everyone relates to that shit. Yeah. <laughs> that shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's it's amazing that more people don't perish. <laughs> yeah, and you know, since you guys say that, my first job was a dishwasher. I think yours was in a fast food restaurant. I was in but a fast food. That movie doesn't exist. The first fast food. Like that is such a. Sure, it does. What about uh, like Fast the, Times at Ridgemont High? The teenager who works in the the restaurant kitchen behind yeah. the. Yeah. Like that, there were so many dynamics to that. There are, yeah. That's where you like, yeah. The first, well, if Adrian wasn't here, I'd say something graphic, but but that's yeah. That, I know you can, but like, do you want me to talk about me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go. Anyway. Let's go. <laughs> oh, sorry. I apologize. I'll keep. I'll edit that out. <laughs> I don't care if you do it, just that your know, kids might watch I know. it. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, what's the most money you've ever spent on a meal? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that one. I, uh, was it a lot, though? Have you spent? Have you ever spent like something that made you go like, oh, wow, I just spent that much? No. I've never gone crazy like that. Have I'm a... Know? I, like you know the you know the diner like when you've come and hung out in our neighborhood. Yeah, I was gonna in say that, Sean that spent diner, more than <laughs> okay. In that diner, I tip. I regularly tip over a hundred percent. Oh, nice. Mm. So when I walk in there, I feel like I'm like a boss. You know what I mean? <laughs> like as you soon as I top. finish my water, like a dude fills it because I come yeah. in and I'm like, oh. <laughs> does that end up does that become an expensive um uh investment though like now every time you go in there they're expecting it oh yeah <laughs> the, bar, the bar is set <laughs> but it, 
but this is also like a diner. We're not talking like, yeah, yeah, diner. this is not a hundred, a hundred percent tip on a $5 meal. But I will say a family of four, like if we just sure. have to stop at Starbucks on, on the road, it's 50 bucks for the That's what I'm saying. True, true, true. It. And this just is, this is a, bread and- this is a Brooklyn diner. Like this, like this is like kids, mac and cheese is 12 bucks, man. Yeah. 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 All right, off my, I have the one last one. I don't even know if you guys know it, but who would you rather be locked in an escape room with, Kanye or Kid Rock? <laughs> oh, shit. That's a terrible question. <laughs> wow, you just you just broke Sen's brain. There's an escape room. I'm going to go with Kanye because... Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's gonna I mean, try to figure it out. Yeah. Also, I'd kill myself in within like ten seconds if I was with Kid Rock. Yeah. So, Lee, I mean, yeah. yeah. He'll oh, pray. Man. He'll pray about it. You, Kanye is so, so Kanye is would never allow himself to not get out. That's no, the thing. Yeah. Like, exactly. He, yeah. Exactly. Kanye would just con- Kanye himself out of there and like he would move. Him. He would move the wall with his mind, bro. <laughs> right. Right. Kid Rock would just be throwing six packs at the wall and shit you Not know what six I mean? packs. he'd be throwing his shit Just at like the wall <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly you know, you know that you know that people you know that when you were growing up I, i'm gonna let you guys out of here but you know when you're growing up someone wrote sh- wrote their name or wrote something on the wall with their shit in the bathroom as kids i think kid rock is one of those kids <laughs> I don't know why I'm, I'm he's, really. He's like probably not running. just one of those kids. Like he's probably still that dude. Doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like probably if you have a party and Kid Rock was over, you go to your bathroom the next morning and you see that he wrote his name and shit. He wrote Kid Rock. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you're like, fucking Kid Rock, man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I will say I never experienced that. Well, no, the girls don't do that. They do hor- <laughs> even more horrible shit. <laughs> I never saw anything nasty. Oh, oh, you guys. Oh, man, you guys are a blast. I'm gonna, I'll am i skip over the final philosophical and let you guys get out here. That was that was tons of fun. I really appreciate no. it. Thank you yeah. so Great, much, man. man. This this what? was like the best time. Oh, it, it truly is. It so much is. I love when I, I love getting a good laugh. And uh, that's the whole point of the show. Like, not the whole point. I love just sharing hip hop. I love sharing your guys' music with people who might not know it. Um, And uh, that's the whole, like, it's just fun. And I get to sit here and draw and hang out with fucking like-minded people who enjoy a good laugh and a good good discussion. So thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, Thank you, man. This is Um, great. This just flew by. It yeah. did. <laughs> what what can we expect from you guys um um in the next few years uh or is that open I mean we're just getting back on the back on the bike right now man. We have this we have a new album coming out this year at some point in, in the fall for sure. It's pretty much wrapped up. It's um produced by Alexander Brown. Buddy Peace does all the cuts and some other fun stuff on it. It's really good and we haven't stopped. We've been working on new tracks since I mean, even we we just keep going. So like we have more stuff ready for whatever we're doing next. Um, I think we're just like, we're like hitting a new stride. We're like, we we have, we've kind of like reconnected personally and musically. And there's really like nothing. I don't know, man. It's a whole new, it's like a whole new world. It's like meter maids, like V, V2 or like, I don't know, V6 at this point, but it's a, it's a whole new thing, man. We have, I think we're, I think we're going to do a lot. <laughs> Oh, I'm looking forward to it. What's the best way for people to stay informed with your guys' moves? Um, you can follow us on Twitter. It's uh, Meter Maids NYC. And then Sentence, what's the Instagram? Instagram is Meter Maids SFR. Yeah. And then we're going to do a lot of, I've kind of like fallen in love with TikTok a little bit. And I've, we're going to do a lot of stuff on TikTok down the line. Well, it's uh, it's uh, I did stuff on there. Are you joking? <laughs> Cuz you can never tell. Yeah, no. I don't know there's something. Yeah, there's I something. I feel like I feel like it's really cool to get a 15 second glimpse at something. You know what I mean? Like you don't you're not trying to sell people something. It's just like, "Hey, check out this 15 seconds of a song," you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you guys were going to be dancing, but Oh, yeah, that too. Oh, what are you? I will also I will also be dancing. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, no. I'm I don't have TikTok. So yeah, I am 80. 
No, I, I know, know, but that's what everyone's. They, remember when it, it used to be Musically? That was the app, and our kids used to use it. But now it's TikTok, and they don't just dance on there anymore. Some dude shows you how to tie <laughs> the coolest fucking knots in the world, and I follow that guy, and I love it. And this other dude shows you how to do the coolest tricks with building, and then he throws the fucking whatever he just made over his shoulder like it was everyone knew it. It's the best. Yeah. All right, you guys, you're the dopest. Thank you Yo. so much. I sorry it took up so much of your time, but I really had a blast hanging with you. And Please look forward to hanging with you guys in Strange Fame Fest. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, man, it's gonna be so good to see you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for real, both of you. This was yeah. so awesome. Thank, Thank you both. You. All right, you guys. All right. Hey. Yo, Strange Famous. Night. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> I bought my first SP when I was 17 The needle strong sucker held me down for 15 If you could write a song then why settle for a 16 Never thought I'd live long More rivers than Joaquin Got me All right um that that's it that's uh that's the meter mates that was fun I I I didn't, I, I could sense that was probably going to be a, a a really fun one and I it's been a while since I laughed and guess what I don't feel my back at all I laughed so hard I didn't I was having a hard time breathing earlier today, and um, I was just laughing so hard. That, that was fun. That was really funny. Um, any uh, words before I close out, Adrian? Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know the difference between Bruce Springsteen and Billy Joel. You really don't? Not at all now? Uh-uh. Br- Billy Joel plays I the th- piano. I, have n- I don't know either of them. <laughs> oh, well, Bruce Springsteen like born the in same- the USA. I feel like they're the same guy. So anytime I hear either name, I just think of like a, a Levi jacket. That's a Bruce. guy That's in a Levi ja- jacket. That's oh, Billy. Billy Joel will not. He don't. He don't wear a Levi jacket. He wears B- a suit. Billy Idol. I know Billy Idol. He wears a, a nose ring. <clears throat> oh, does he? I don't know. No, what wait. Like. Billy Idol. Yeah. Or like Rebel. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Anyway. Do you think that's uh, due to? Is your um um. My family never listened to them. Well, I was going to say, is your exposure to both Billy Joel and um, the boss from Howard Stern? I don't ha- I don't know either oh. of them. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know their music. Oh. Well, I know one of them played it. Born the... in the USA. Okay. That's the boss. Born Springsteen? In... Yeah, Springsteen. What does Billy Joel sing? Piano. No, I was going to say Piano Man. He plays, uh, he's, um, oh. Uh, his biggest song. Oh, shit. Uh, I, oh, I can't, I can't do it. I don't know. But yeah, he was right. It wasn't oh. Bruce Springsteen ending uh, Madison Square yeah. Garden. It was Billy Joel. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? We didn't start Piano the Man. fire. Yeah. We didn't start the fire. No. No. <laughs> That's fucking. <laughs> you did what I did earlier. <laughs> uh. Oh, Uptown Girl. Oh, I actually like it. Uptown Girl. I think. Na, 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 na. Or I liked that song. Well, here's the thing about both of those two. You'll know, you probably know a majority of their songs. You just didn't realize they're the ones that sing it. Yeah. Because Billy Joel, like, he's hit after hit, and he doesn't make any new music. So all his music is all his old oldies. Hmm. Yeah, he's one of those guys. He's like, I'm, I'll stick with my oldies. I don't want to write new music. He's really good. Yeah, so just uh, thought I'd say that. But <laughs> Well, hey, you guys, remember to stay the hell away from our Twitter at DOD45 show. DOD45 show. At DOD45 show. Why? Because you post on there? No, just stay the hell away from there. Don't go follow well, us on saying. Twitter. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're trying to get them No, to... I'm not. I'm saying don't go follow us on well, Twitter. Well, then take the Twitter down. Don't go follow us at DOD45 show. Don't do it. Um... Hey, yeah, the dot coms and socials uh, at DOD45 on Instagram, at DOD45W on Instagram, DOD45.com is the website where you can see all past episodes, all of that stuff. Artbytie.com is where you'll just know everything to do with the artwork and everything. Art by Tie funds all of this. That's fine. Let's just go. And then uh, at Art by Tie. Hey, also, there's a comic book called The Dragon coming out. Um, it's out now. There, um, it's my first comic book cover. I, I don't do comics, but they were asked me to do a, a, a guest comic book cover for mm-hmm. their comic. That's out. Um, you can buy. Uh, you can buy that. 
Okay. Um, it's just got my drawing, my drawing on it. Are you gonna put the link in the? I will put a link in the descriptions, and I'll, and I I probably won't put the link in the descriptions. You can see it on my social medias. That's oh, where okay. you. Yeah, and then um, Strange Fame Fest. Obviously, that's this weekend. So we'll look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, our the next episode is expected to be the live the Strange Famous Fest. We're recording on location live there at the show. That'll be the final episode of this season then we'll be on break for a few a couple of months um, so we can do some art shows for art by tie and the idea is when we come back the next season i'm hoping we'll start off with two max will be the start the season opener of next season and we also have already um, um existerio is going to be in because candy's 22 has a new album out that's existerio and barf loco so mm-hmm. um yeah so exterior should be um in the next season too hey, do you and think that they're just gonna make everybody wear, wear hello my name is tags that would be it's a great idea because i'm starting to stress out a little bit why are you forgetting who people are i don't know i'm not good with names you i are, have to google every faces? single name no you'll be good okay all right that's okay, it, you guys. Uh, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy drawing, happy conversing, and thanks for conspiring with us. Thanks, everybody. That was a beautiful conversation and a lot of fun. Peace. D-O-D-45. Thank you for joining in on yet another episode of the DOD45 show. Please hit the subscribe or follow button so that you never miss an episode. You can even go one step further by leaving us a review on the YouTube stream or on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever it is that you stream our show from. You can find me at Art by Ty on all the socials or at artbytie.com. And if you'd like to follow the DOD45 show on social media, we're at DOD45W on Instagram, or you can go over to our website at DOD45.com where you can shoot us an email, join our mailing list, and watch all of our past episodes consider joining us for a live chat on the youtube premieres of episodes every wednesday night at 8 p.m eastern peace